it, it was a really, um, it was an exhaust, exhausting two weeks. Uh, and How many days did you shoot? we shot eight days total over, over two weeks. Okay. Um, like often days and nights. Yeah. Um, so long days. Including one day that just never, ever ended. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when Angela says we were like a family, like we were like, we were sort of like all on this ship that was off in the middle of the <laughs> ocean for two weeks of, of ma- it was like madness, you know? Um, but like also as, as kind of anxious and, and, and high intensity and high emotion as the environment had to be because of the story we were telling, the level of support and trust and unity um, in the production will make it something that I don't think any of us will ever forget, mm-hmm. um, you know, and uh, certainly uh, I will never forget what these two did for, for, for this film. This film is Angela and Seth. So when you talk about the one day that will never end, you guys all kind of looked at each other and laughed. Can you tell us a little bit about why, what happened that day? But sure. You can't talk about that day without talking about the two days before. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it was I, like three days that never ended. I, I try to pride myself on organization. And, you know, this film uh, had a lot of pieces and we brought in a lot of uh, color theory into the cinematography and we... Uh, I noticed that. I noticed in the kitchen scenes, um, the, you know, Daniel's perspective, Angela's perspective, Dan, sorry, Daniel, Jennifer, sorry. Just, you know what I mean? Um, that <laughs> the lights in the kitchen specifically were very different. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, you know, we could do like a full like frame by frame analysis of all of the of the, the sort of thought and theory behind mm. each of the fr- the composition and the color theory and the wardrobe and the way Seth's hair was, and like all the details. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we had uh, chosen a location for the Morris house, Jennifer and Daniel Morris's house, that was sort of the, the you know, primary location for the film because a lot mm. of pieces take place there. And I did not want to shoot it in a conventional location that's used for a lot of adult stuff. I wanted to make it look fresh and different. I found a new location and everything seemed great on paper and they were great on the first day we, we went through, we were shooting stuff. And, uh, then we had a visit by the police at about 8 PM, not for the reason that you would think normally on an Mm -hmm. adult set, but because they had been alerted that there were like, you know, there was like underage drinking or partying happening. Was it probably well, it had nothing sound. to do with us? Nothing oh, to do with it us. wasn't even your house. Well, it or had nothing, it to, do, it nothing to do with us. <laughs> well, the fact that like there's people talking late at night. Well, this people... was pretty secluded. This was a somewhat secluded oh, estate. Weird. No. So the cops show up. It's about eight o'clock. The cops show up. Um, did a walk through the house because they were checking for underage drinkers. Uh, obviously, there were no minors whatsoever involved in any aspect of the production. Uh, but, uh, as soon as that visit happened, we were like, okay, we're done for today. Mm -hmm. Um, and the homeowner was very apologetic, explained that it was a mistake. It was a, some, it was a call down the street and the cops had come to the wrong address. Everything will be fine tomorrow. So we show up in the next day and we shoot and things seem fine. They're going well. And then at about 10 o'clock at night, like what, like a (laughs) hundred Teenagers start showing up on the property Wait, to have a rave. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I'm not kidding. Like, we're, we're yeah. you know, we, we're shooting dialogue. We're there. Thankfully. I think Abigail had just shown up. She's, you know, has a, 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 is the supporting actress in the film. And we were just starting to work through her scene. And, uh, and then we just noticed lights outside because they were glow sticks, you know, because they were having like a rave. And we kind of realized we'd go out there and, and um, uh, you know, the big burly guys on the crew kind of go out there to see what's going on. And, and the homeowner casually informed us or like the homeowner's cousin or like some – there was a – it was sort of run by a pack of cousins or brothers or something. Oh so like one of, the, one of the relatives announced, oh, yeah, you know, we're, we're throwing a party. And we're like, ah, uh, no, we're like, we're shooting a film. Um, but obviously, you know, as soon as the party started, uh, it was time to go. 
So we packed up our stuff for the second night and, and drove through the swarms of clearly underage drinkers hmm. uh, <laughs> that, you know, I, I suspect he may have had uh, coming to his lo- his location on a regular basis. And I don't suspect, I think it was the first time he had ever rented uh, his location for, we had got it off of a mainstream production website, yeah. but I don't think uh, he had really done that before. And I think he was doing a lot of double bookings or who knows. Did, or maybe because I find that this happens sometimes with location owners, they think, oh, you're shooting an adult film, so like mm-hmm. there's no quality control, mm-hmm. or like you don't care what happens. Yeah, well, we it's had, a big like party, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we you guys would take yeah. your job seriously. <clears throat> so we, we had, had yeah, so we had gone <laughs> in and like they knew we were shooting a mainstream film, mm-hmm. but I mean, again, I don't think they really understood anything. So on the third day, we were left with, oh my gosh, we have to shoot. We've already committed so much to this location. We can't, like, fake that, you know, we can't remove move this anywhere else. We have to finish. We don't know what else is going to happen because at this point every day was bringing a new surprise. And we had lost hours on the first two days of, of shooting. And so we, we um, all rallied and shot uh, the longest uh, day and night in history. We all left <laughs> when the sun was coming up. Um, and the scenes that you see at the beginning of the, f- uh, of the film in the confrontation in the kitchen, uh, in the beginning of the film, and then obviously the other side of it that happens halfway through where, um, uh, Daniel gets particularly aggressive. Um, we shot that at about five thirty in the morning, like with everybody <clears throat> on their last nerve, like yeah. pff, just not, not in a frustrated way, but just in like a, just exhausted frazzled kind of way. Yeah. And now when I look at that, I think that I'm so, I, I actually find one of the most, um, unsettling moments in the film is in that, that the first, uh, time we meet the other side of Daniel and when he, uh, confronts Jennifer in the kitchen. And I know that we were so on running on fumes at that moment that it actually like the, it it translated into such an anxious m- moment in the film, right. which I think adds so much to the story. But the real life was that was five thirty in the morning, and like <laughs> literally, Seth was just getting the last screams out that he could before like collapsing. You know, <laughs> before we all like, and you know, Angela is just being like battered, like verbally. <laughs> as, you know, like we and we're all just filming it like this. So it was, it, you know, it was uh, and and we got the hell out of there and we'll never go back, you know. But it uh, it was, uh, I think, a testament to uh, – that's not the type of set that I like to run. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, we were all kind of like, we have to get through this. Uh, and, uh, you know, next time, <laughs> maybe go back to those houses. We yeah. Were. <laughs> There's a reason why but we it, shoot at those houses all the yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But we did – we made it through. But that was probably, I would say, like – that was like the height of anxiety. Yeah. You know what? Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.